So, now we are going to start the rheological characterization of magnetorheological polishing fluid. So, now what are the components of MR, um, MR polishing fluid? So, it consists of CIP particles, abrasive particles and base media. So, first what we do? We prepare the base media. So, base media it consists of paraffin oil and AP3 grease. So, with certain composition, so initially we have started with 80 percent by weight of this paraffin oil and then 20 percent by weight this AP3 grease. We mix it and homogeneous, homogeneous mix it for a long time for many hours, several hours to make a homogeneous mixture. After that we mix these CIP particles, carbon iron particles for a long time so that it can generate a homogeneous mixture so that it can generate a homogeneous mixture. Okay. So, now this ABR fluid is prepared with a base media, paraffin oil base media. Now, what we do? We mix abrasive particles there. So, when we are, uh, then we start uh, stirring it for a long time. So, we have a stirring machine. So, on the stirring machine, it is rotated. Uh, this fluid is actually mixed for a longer time. Okay. So, in a stirrer. So, for the several hours actually it is rotated. Then after mixing this abrasive particles it will become magnetorheological polishing fluid. So, these abrasive particles actually it does not have any magnetic property. So, only that CIP particles it has a magnetic property. So, this magnetorheological polishing fluids magnetic property it is different than this normal MR fluid. Because this abrasive particles it does not have any magnetic property. When these abrasive particles it come into the in a in a line come when these abrasive particles comes along a chain path, so this chain structure actually breaks there. Okay. So we can see under microscope, so these chains, CIP particles chains are not continuous chain. When abrasive particles comes here, so this chain breaks. Okay. So there is very few papers. Uh, available in the literature who, the, who uh, means who has taken consideration of this magnetorheological polishing fluid because this abrasive particles what happens uh, it will erode the wear out the surfaces of the rheometer. So, components of the rheometer so that is why many people avoid that. So, it can be this experience can be conducted by taking proper precautions. So, now uh, this phase different phase already we have discussed this magnetic dispersed phase, continuous base medium phase and then this additives and then we have added the abrasive particles there. Synthesis of MR polishing fluid already we have discussed. So, this is MR polishing fluid 20 percent by volume CS grade 20 percent by volume silicon carbide with 1500 mesh size. And then common abrasive particles are silicon carbide, boron carbide, cdm oxide, diamond, alumina. So, choice of abrasives are depend on the depends on the workpiece and workpiece material and hardness of this workpiece material. So, base media is prepared by using AP3 grease and mineral oil. So, we have used paraffin oil, you can use silicon oil also. Okay. So, Magnetological polishing fluid here this schematically it is shown when we are not applying any magnetic field here these CIP particles and abrasive particles are randomly distributed here homogeneously it is randomly distributed. Now, suppose you are applying some magnetic field then immediately these CIP particles are forming chains. So, these kind of long chains are actually forming. So, outside these are the CIP particles and inside these abrasive particles. So, abrasive particles are held in between these chains. So, we are trying to show this schematically. This is not exactly the ideal case, but we are showing how it happens. Now, when you are giving some shear force here at this direction, so this chains will try to rotate. So, these chains are rotating, rotating. So, when you are applying more shear rate, this chains will rotate more and after some time what will happen? These chains will break here. This chains will break. When chains breaks, this MR fluid does not have a certain, certain time to recombine with this within this chains. Okay. So, that is why this MR fluid it has a shear thinning property. 
Okay, so when you are applying more shear rate, your viscosity actually reduces with the with the application of high shear rate. This viscosity reduces. That's why this MR fluid has a shear thinning property. So now, why you are doing this rheological experiment? Because this finishing efficiency and finishing quality of MR fluid process depends on the relies on the mainly on the rheological properties of MR fluid, which must be characterized before using any specific uh, applications. So, because this rheological property means this finishing efficiency basically depends on the yield stress and viscosity of this MR polishing fluid. Because it is a non-Newtonian fluid, it is, it, it is defined by the viscosity and yield stress of this fluid. Okay. So, finishing efficiency basically depends on the rheological properties of the MR fluid. More yield stress of this fluid, it will it has a higher strength. Okay. So, these properties are responsible for the bonding strength of these abrasive particles surrounding the CIP particles chains. So, this more the strength of this fluid will be more bonding strength to the abrasive particles and these abrasive particles more bonding strengths are there then it will remove the surface undulations in a better way. MRP fluid composition and volume ratio have an impact on the rheological properties of the MR fluid. So, it is fluid, this individual components of the fluid governs the rheological properties of the magnetorheological polishing fluid. So, that is why this it is required to predict the what should be the concentration of CIP particles, what should be the concentration of this abrasive particles, what should be the concentration of this grease, what should be the concentration of your base media like paraffin oil. Okay. So, that is why we need to find out what should be the concentration of different elements of this MR fluid. <coughs> so, MR magnetological fluid actually it is represented by three different models. All these are actually non-Newtonian model. So, first one is the most popular, this is called Bingham plastic model. In the Bingham plastic model, you can see tau equal to shear stress tau y plus eta into gamma dot. So, tau y is the yield stress of this fluid, tau is the applied shear stress, eta is the plastic viscosity and gamma dot is the shear rate. So, in x axis it is shear rate and in y axis it is shear stress. So, this one is the Bingham plastic fluid. So, it has a certain yield stress when applied shear stress is greater than this yield stress of this fluid then only this fluid flows otherwise this fluid does not flow. The second one is the hassel buckle fluid I uh, sorry Casson fluid second one is the Casson fluid here. So, this Casson fluid actually it is represented by root tau equal to root over tau c plus root over eta c and gamma dot. Here tau also same as applied shear stress and gamma dot is the shear rate, tau c is the yield stress and eta c is the plastic viscosity here. Also MR fluid can be represented by the most popular which is herschel buckle fluid. herschel buckle fluid can be represented as tau equal to tau equal to tau y plus k into gamma to the gamma dot to the power n. So, these are the different fluids are there. So, in herschel buckle fluid this n actually governs this consistency index it governs whether it is shear thickening, whether it is shear thinning or whether it is uh, normal mineral plastic fluid. So, in herschel buckle fluid if we put this n equal to 1 then it will become the normal Bingham plastic fluid. When n is greater than 1, then it is shear thickening fluid, means its viscosity increases with the increase in the shear rate. And when n is less than 1, it is shear thinning fluid. So, different uh, rheometers are actually tried. Initially, we have tried with capillary rheometer. So, the advantage of using capillary rheometer is that its it is very uh, cheap to make and it is easy to make also and easy to use also. 
So here uh, in our and it has a certain similarity. It has a similarity in like our uh, finishing process, MRF finishing process. In like in MRF process, this is the direction of the field, magnetic field, and we are flowing the deformation direction. We are flowing the fluid in the vertical direction, and in the horizontal direction, we apply the magnetic field in case of MRF process. So here you can see that the CIP chain structures are there. So these chains are forming horizontally. Now we are flowing this fluid along this vertical direction. Okay. So, so these are the reasons for developing the capillary magnetometer. Similarity with the MRP fluid flow in MRF. Presence of abrasives in polishing fluid damage the surface of the commercial available rheometer. High yield stress of MRP fluid in magnetic field. And then simple in construction, this capillary rheometer. So you can see this first design of that capillary rheometer. So this is the container here. So constant temperature jacket is actually it is kept here so that this temperature of this MR fluid can be maintained in this jacket, in this container. This temperature can be maintained here. So it is filled up with the MR polishing fluid here. Okay. So, so this is the capillary tube. It is attached just bottom, at the bottom of this container. Okay. Now we can see this is the core material of this magnet. It has to be certain, maintain certain ratio. L by T ratio should be more than 0.4. So here, diameter of this tube, it is 2 millimeter here. Internal diameter of this tube is, capillary tube is 2 millimeter. Okay. So length of this uh, flat to flat actually plates are actually fixed just outside this capillary tube. So the length of this capillary flat plate is 60 millimeter. Okay. So there is a container is there to collect the MR fluid which is coming outside this coming through the capillary tube after steady state is raised. Obviously it is after steady state is raised. So this MR fluid is flown by using a compressor here. So this there is a compressor entry here. So through this compressor is coming. So there is a gauge is there, pressure gauge, digital pressure gauge. From this pressure gauge actually you can measure the whatever the pressures are there inside that container, MR fluid container. Okay. So this is the electromagnet here. This is the core material of this electromagnet. In front of that core material, two flat plates are actually fixed. And this is the capillary here. And this is the container to collect the MR fluid just below the capillary. So this can sustain up to pressure of 7 bar because when we have started doing experiment using this rheometer, what we have seen that because of we are using compressor, so it is making a hollow channel inside this MR fluid. Okay. So it is very uh, means it is very difficult to maintain a uniform pressure just above the MR fluid layer. Okay, so it is very difficult to maintain a uniform pressure inside the container. So that's why this design is discarded, and then we have developed one more de design. So we can show we shall show here. So it is we have used our similar setup of MRF setup for measuring the viscosity of this polishing fluid. We have used the similar setup for measuring the viscosity of this polishing fluid. Here what we have done, this is the capillary here, just outside this capillary we kept this magnet, electromagnet here and this MR fluid actually it is flown by this hydraulic unit. So this is the piston here, MR fluid piston. So it is MR fluid is flown through this hydraulic unit. Okay, so this is the top media cylinder. So initially this top media cylinder is filled up with MR fluid. After that, this total att attachment is attached. This total attachment is attached to, to this top media cylinder. Okay, just below that, we have fixed our this capillary tube. 
and just outside this capillary tube, we kept these two plates for applying this magnetic field. Okay. So, in this configuration, so advantage is that we can measure the viscosity of this polishing media in the same setup and here our magnetic field direction of this magnetic field this is the direction of this magnetic field and MR fluid is flowing in this vertical direction. So, you have to measure the viscosity of this fluid so that this fluid deformation shear direction and also this magnetic field direction should be perpendicular to each other. So, this is the container here, here you can collect the MR fluid. After this MR fluid inside this capillary has come to a steady state condition and you have to collect the MR fluid after that steady state condition inside this container here and you have to measure the time. So, from this, from this time and from the weight and from the density of this MR fluid, if you know the density of this MR fluid, okay. So, you can calculate the volumetric flow rate of this MR fluid that is Q, volumetric flow rate of MR fluid. So, that is millimeter Q per second. So, this is the volumetric flow rate of MR fluid you can calculate. So, only thing you have to calculate here volumetric flow rate. And at the same time, we know the pressure, how much pressure we have given from the hydraulic unit. So, so we know the pressure difference, pressure gradient across the capillary and we know the volumetric flow rate. And if we know these two parameter, we can calculate the yield stress and viscosity of this fluid using this capillary diameter. So, this container it contains 130 centimeter cube. So, here this MR fluid container it contains 130 centimeter cube of cubic centimeter of fluid. So, this is the experimental setup, same experimental setup and MR process is used for capillary diameter. Here you can see this is the magnet, C type magnets are used. So, this is the magnet and this is the core material here. In front of that core material you can see two plates are actually kept and this is the capillary here and into this portion at this portion only you have. So, at this portion only this magnetic field is applied using these two flat plates which is attached to the core material. So, we can collect the polishing media here just below this capillary for a certain time after it is reached to the steady state condition. So, this is the calculations. So, this is the cylindrical capillary it is shown, S is the shear stress here. So, this is the L length, L is the length of this capillary. So, in our case L is the length over which magnetic field we are applying the magnetic field. 2 R is the diameter of this capillary, in our case we have considered 2 millimeter diameter of this capillary tube through which we have flown the MR fluid. And shear stress at the wall, we have calculated as, it can be calculated as del P r by 2 L. Del P is the pressure gradient, so how much pressure we are giving across the capillary, so that we know from the hydraulic unit how much pressure we are giving. R is the radius of that capillary, L is the length of the capillary over which we are applying the magnetic field. And final equation for the viscosity calculation is 4 Q by pi r Q. Q is the volumetric flow rate of this MR fluid after steady state is reached which we have measured during experiment. R is the radius of this capillary. Eta P L is the plastic viscosity, S W is the shear stress at the wall of the capillary and psi is the yield stress of this fluid. Okay, so, this is the equation. So, y axis is rate of shear 4 cube by pi r cube and x axis it is the shear stress at the wall. So, at different pressure by changing the pressure we can get different rate of shear. So, q already we know here volumetric flow rate at different pressure we can calculate and at different pressure we can calculate what is the shear stress 
and what is the rate of shear 4 q by pi r q. So, by plotting these two for rate of shear and shear stress at different pressure we will get this line. So, this line when it is you have to do a car fitting using a line using a straight line and at this point you have to just extrapolate to this x axis. Why where, where it is extrapolated, where it is touching to the x axis that point will give the 4 by 3 psi ok. And so, that value of shear stress divided by 4 by 3 will give the yield stress of this fluid ok. And the slope of this curve will give the slope of this curve will give the 1 by slope of this curve will give the plastic viscosity ok. So, this 1 by slope of this curve slope equal to 1 by eta PL it will give the plastic viscosity ok. So, uh, so this, uh, this capillary viscosity is a very important instrument for measuring the viscosity of this MR fluid on the same MRFF setup. So, after that we have started working on parallel plate rheometer. So, Anton for MCR 301 rheometer is used. They have a magnetoradiological device there to apply the magnetic field perpendicular to the flow direction. So, this is the bottom plate here, they have two plate, two parallel plates. So, this is the bottom plate which is sandblasted in our case and there is a container kind of thing. So, to um, protrusion is kept there ok. So, here actually we have to keep our MR fluid so that, so this diameter of this, uh, this one, this uh, bottom plate is 20 millimeter and this is the top plate here this is the top plate it is it should be kept vertically by reversing the direction reversing its direction. So, it is called tool master. So, this top surface of this tool master is sandblasted. So, this is the parallel plate this is top plate here this is the top plate and this is the bottom plate here. So, we are applying magnetic field just perpendicular to this parallel plates. Now, we are rotating this top plate here with a certain RPM. So, this RPM is proportional to the shear rate of this fluid and when, when you are applying some, when you have applied some magnetic field and now you are trying to rotate this top plate tool master, it will generate a reversing torque, reverse torque. So, this reverse torque is actually proportional to the shear stress of this fluid. So, shear stress of this fluid is proportional to the torque and shear rate is proportional to the RPM of this top plate. So, at different rotation at different shear stress uh, shear rate you will get different shear stress and these values you can plot ok. So, this is the shear rate and shear stress at different shear rate you can plot the shear stresses and these values you can connect or you can fit using a using three different equations which are used for modeling of magnetoradiological fluid. So, this Bingham plastic, Herschel buckle and Cassin fluid. So, we have fitted these three equations, fitted these points using these three equations ok. So, after fitting, so we calculated the R square value for all the three equations. So, for Herschel buckle Bingham plastic and Cassin fluid model. So, total 30 experiments are carried out using CIP concentration of minus 15, uh, CIP concentration of 15 percent to 35 percent. So, we have varied CIP, CIP particles, CIP carbon particle concentration from 15 to 35 percent, abrasive 7.5 to 17.5 percent, grease 6 to 14 percent and magnetic field point from 0.2 to 0.6 Tesla magnetic field. So, these are the four variables are there and we have varied and experiments are carried out using central composite rotatable design. 
and what we have measured here we have measured yield stress and viscosity of this fluid so after fitting these things so from this this is the bingham plastic this is the hersel bagley and this is the casson fluid so you can see there so this is the yield stress from the bingham plastic model and this is the plastic viscosity from bingham plastic model so from yield uh, uh, hersel bagley model also you can calculate the yield stress and viscosity from casson fluid also you can calculate yield stress and viscosity after fitting all these points so so we have checked the yield stress and viscosity so what we found that r square value from all this all this 30 experiments we have seen that r square value is maximum for in case of r square is the nothing but is the fitting parameter for car fitting parameter so its value is near to 1 means it is high very good fitting 0 means very means it is very poor fitting so in case of hersel bagley model we will see we can see this r square value r square value is very high in case of hersel bagley model so hersel bagley fluid actually it fits to the data points obtained from the rheometer okay so for so for that what we have done yield stress is calculated from the hersel bagley model and viscosity post yield viscosity is calculated from the bingham plastic model after that we have done the anova study and what we have seen that for yield stress magnetic field has the highest contribution for the yield stress then cip particles has the next contribution and abrasive and grease they have a very less contribution so magnetic field has a 57.65% contribution and carbonate particles has a 10.71% contribution on yield stress of this fluid and then we have done the optimization study and we have found that so this 30% cip 10% abrasive particle and 12% grease will give the and at 0.5 tesla magnetic field will give the highest combination which will give the highest yield stress of this fluid and this is the regression equation to calculate the yield stress and similarly anova is done for the viscosity model also so what we have found that here also this magnetic field has very high con uh, contribution 53.62% 17.68% but abrasive and grease they don't have that much contribution okay so this is the regression equation for the viscosity model now we have to do the after doing this rheological study we have to do the magnetic characterization also this magnetic characterization of mrp fluid is carried out in vibrating sample magnetometer it is called vsm so there magnetic field is varied from 1 minus 1.75 tesla to 1.75 tesla then it will come back to again minus 1.75 tesla and mr fluid is kept inside a container small container and it is gone through a huge magnetic field minus 1.75 to 1.75 so now here you can see this one in this zone it is exaggerated here you can see these two lines one is for forward and another one is the backward okay so this hysteresis loop you can see it has a very less remnant magnetization here you can see this remnant magnetization is very less so this is the main property of the cip particles here so it has a very less remnant magnetization means when you are removing this magnetic field immediately whatever the cip particles are there because it does not have any remnant magnetization it will not agglomerate so it will immediately it will be demagnetized okay so there is a less chance of agglomeration in case of this mr fluid which is prepared using cip particles so it has a poor receptivity of 13.7 saturation magnetization of 141 eu per gram saturation magnetic flux density here it is 1.6 tesla 
and of all the experimental uh, results whatever we have shown earlier lowest association magnetization we have found 1.098 okay so lowest association magnetization which is found 1.098 and we have applied the magnetic field as 0.6 tesla so our rheological experiments are not affected by the magnetic saturation of the mrp fluid so effect of cip and magnetic field effect of cip concentration and magnetic field here left hand side it is yield stress and right hand side it is viscosity you can see with the increase in the magnetic field your yield stress actually increases and with the increase in the magnetic field both yield stress and viscosity actually increases so if you are applying more magnetic fields this more strong cip chain structures are forming so this cip chains will form from single columnar structure to a single structure to columnar structure so it will become a very thick structure so these abrasive particles will be held with a very higher force there so more bonding strength will be there more dipole moment will be there so that's why you will get higher yield stress and viscosity of this polishing media so this is the force acting on a single cip particle can be calculated as m chi m b del b by mu 0 m is the mass of this spherical abrasive particle chi m is the mass susceptibility of this cip particle b is the magnetic field intensity del b is the gradient of this magnetic field intensity mu 0 is the permeability in free space so all these experiments are shown here 30% cip 10% abrasive and 12% grease and 0.5 tesla magnetic field so with the increase in the magnetic field or cip concentration you can see both yield stress and viscosity increases and why with the increase in cip cip concentration increases means more thick structure increases structure of this cip chains also increases with the increase in the cip concentration okay so it will become more strong and when you are applying this abrasive particles we can see from 20% cip so this is almost almost illustrates almost uh, constant but at 25% to 35% you can see here this yield stress actually reduces similar thing actually happens for this one viscosity also so that's why if we increase more abrasive particles there what happens this abrasive particles being a non magnetic in nature it does not have any magnetic property so it will when it comes in between this chain structure this if such some chains are actually continuous chain it will break into two pieces okay so this chain strength actually reduces so that's why with the increase in the abrasive particle concentration this viscosity and yield stress actually reduces and also with the increase in the grease concentration also we can see that this yield stress and viscosity of this fluid also reduces because grease actually acts as an inhibitor for a certain fixed magnetic field if we increase the grease it will resist the cip particles to come in a chain okay so with the increase in the grease our yield stress and viscosity of this polishing fluid also reduces so from this figure we can see here that with the increasing the shear rate of this fluid this viscosity of this polishing fluid it is reduces drastically so from this figure we can we can say that this mr fluid is a shear thinning fluid so here also we can see with the increase in the shear rate of this fluid shear stress of the fluid also reduces here so this gradient actually reduces we can say this gradient actually reduces so from this shear stress profile also we can say that this mr fluid mr polishing fluid is a shear thinning fluid so from the schematic diagram already i have discussed this one when we are giving increasing more shear more shear this cip chain structure actually breaks 
and it has little time to recombine this to recombine. So, so MR fluid actually behaves as a CR thinning fluid. So, now we shall discuss the experimental reals on flat work pieces. Rotational MRF experimental uh, uh, experimental uh, reals on flat work pieces. So, we have considered flat work pieces. Now, we have considered three different kinds of work piece one is brass, stainless steel, and then E N A to work piece. So, so, this is the effect of rotational speed of this magnet. So now, we can see that with the increase in the rotational speed of this magnet, your change in R A means initial R A minus final R A increases and it reaches to a certain value for both three, uh, three different materials. So, at what point it reaches, it is it gives the optimum RPM of the magnet. So, this is the optimum RPM of the magnet where change in R is maximum. After that, you can see that surface change in R actually reduces. With the increasing the rotational speed of the magnet, what happens? Your centrifugal force increases. So, indentation into the workpiece surface increases, also your tangential cutting force also increases. And if we are increasing with the highest means with higher RPM, so this abrasive particles it will it covers with the more area into the workpiece surface, more area of the workpiece surface. So, that is why your change in RA actually increases with the increase in the RPM of the magnet. But Beyond, an, beyond that optimum RPM of this magnet, what happens? This change in RA again reduces because we have discussed that shear thinning nature of this MR fluid. So, at high shear rate, we are increasing RPM means we are increasing shear rate. With high shear rate, this MR fluid would not able to sustain the structure. So, it is this chain structure is actually breaks. So, that is why with the increasing the rotational speed of this magnet your shear uh, means surface roughness also reduces. Now, here you can see this is the change in material ring wall with the increasing the rotational speed of this magnet material ring wall increases. Here you can see at high RPM this material ring wall also increases because at high RPM, because of this random penetration of this abrasive particles into the workpiece surface, so metal level increases, but their surface finish actually deteriorates. Now, we can uh, we shall discuss one more thing is that EN8 is the magnetic material, but stainless steel we have uh, stainless steel we have considered as non magnetic here, we have used non magnetic stainless steel, brass non magnetic, it is also non magnetic. We have seen that for magnetic E N A work piece, we, we got very less improvement in surface finish. Why it is so? So, you can see this magnetic field vector plot here for stainless steel work piece and for E N A work piece. So, this is these are the E N A work piece here. When you are applying some magnetic field, what happens? There is a local magnetization takes place in between this magnet, magnetic pole, and the workpiece. Okay. So, because of this local magnetization, the strength of this magnetic field inside this MR fluid actually reduces. And individual workpiece, actually, this workpiece it becomes a magnetic material. And what happens? Whatever MR fluid has uh, MR fluid is there, it sticks into the this MR uh, this magnetic workpieces. For polishing actually we need a relative motion as MR fluid actually sticks into the workpiece surface there is no relative motion in between this workpiece and this MR fluid because there is a certain layer of this MR fluid actually which sticks to the workpiece surface. So, that is why it sticks and that is why there is a less relative motion is there in between this MR fluid and the workpiece. So, there is a very less improvement in surface finish. Also, you can see from this figure, this magnetic contour lines, here it is totally uniform, 
but it, here this magnetic ground control lines it is not uniform it is concentrated towards the magnetic workpiece so that's why with magnetic workpiece we got very less improvement in surface finish so this is the anova we have done with four parameters hydraulic extrusion pressure finishing cycles rotation speed of the magnet and volume ratio of cip and sic cip and silicon carbide abrasive particles we have considered 0 0.34 to 4 hydraulic pressure we have considered 32.5 bar to 42.5 bar finishing cycles we have considered 400 to 800 and rotation speed of the magnitude we have considered 20 to 100 so by considering all these things we have found that rotational speed of the magnet has highest contribution finishing cycles also has contribution and pressure also has highest contribution okay and a square has has also has a contribution 18.47 percent so these are the significant parameters pressure cycle and rotational speed of the magnet although cip by sic ratio of the cip by sic also significant but is ratio is contribution is less okay so that's why it is not that significant parameter in this case so these are the two work pieces we have considered one is stainless steel another one is the brass so this is the optimized parameter 39 by pressure finishing cycle 660 67 rpm and cip by sic ratio of r and we got 45.27 percent improvement in surface finish so here also we can see with the increasing pressure surface finish improves percentage reduction in array it is calculated as initial array minus final array by initial array multiplied by 100 it will give the percentage reduction in array with the increase in pressure percentage del array increases and it reaches to an optimum value after that actually it's stalls with the finishing cycle also you can see initially there is a high improvement in surface finish but after some time you will see when this finishing cycle increases it's actually it is stalls after some time okay so with the volume ratio of cip sic you can see there is an optimum value up to this optimum value if we increase the cip by sic ratio the surface finish improves after that it reduces because up to certain value your CIP percentage increases as the CIP percentage increases more strong bond actually will form abrasive particles will get more strength to the polishing uh, for polishing but when the CIP percentage is increasing more at the, uh, beyond a certain limit abrasive particles will be less so in that case less abrasive particle it is because of this less abrasive particle it is very difficult to do the machining polishing so because uh, uh, because without this abrasive particles there will not be any polishing to happen so this is the rotational speed of the magnet its effect on percentage del array it increases with the rotational speed of the magnet surface finish improves after that due to the shear thinning nature of the fluid it stalls up uh, reduces after some time so this is the SEM picture using methodological abrasive flow finishing so this is the grinding layer direction grinded workpiece initial workpieces are grinded so this is the grinding layer here along this direction so you can see here these perpendicular marks are there so which is MRF layer which is perpendicular to the grinding layer so after MRFF, you can see lots of peaks and valleys are, uh, valleys are available here. But you can see with RMRFF process, you can see these valleys are actually separated by long distance. So these valleys are actually separated by long distance. Okay. So these kind of cross edge patterns also you can see it is generated on the workpiece surface. So this is the brass workpiece. This is the grinding layer for this brass workpiece. Here differently in MRF process itself we got a very good surface finish but these kind of scratch marks are there valleys are there but using this MRF, R MRF process rotational MRF process you will see these cross patterns and it is 
all these values are completely removed. So, this is the FM image for stainless steel. You can see these kind of undulations are there because it is grinding operation. Okay, so the, uh, using MRF process without rotation, these values you can see it is clearly visible. But using RMF process, you can see these values are almost removed. Although few deep grinding marks are there, it is not removed. By using this MRF at optimum rotational speed, you will see this all these values are totally removed. Similar case for this brass also, you can see this undulation surface undulations are there. So, these deep grinding marks are there in MRF process without rotation. So, with rotation, you can see we got this 0 0.09 at 20 rpm and 0 0.05 50 micron we got at 67 rpm. So, these are the initial ground surface for stainless steel and brass. So, now it is reflected you can see at the after finishing this IT convert it is reflected for steel and for brass also. So, these are the surface roughness profile, initial surface roughness profile, final surface roughness profile. So, this final surface roughness profile you can see it is almost flat in case of MRF or MRF process stainless steel for stainless steel. For brass workpiece you can see it has become totally flat. For brass workpiece this surface roughness profile it becomes totally flat. So, we got 50 nanometer in case of brass workpiece and 110 nanometer in case of stainless steel workpiece final surface roughness value. So, this is the bearing ratio curve before so this, this is the initial bearing ratio this is the final bearing ratio at 60 rpm we can see. So, this bearing curve actually flats become flats after polishing, but, if, but for brass workpiece it can see this bearing curve bearing ratio curve it becomes almost flat totally flat. So, higher the flatness of this bearing ratio curve, you will get more contact area. Okay. So, so, you can see this bearing area curve also improves using this MRF process. So, after that we have done the experiments on cylindrical workpiece. So, we have used this uh, rotational methodological abyssal finishing process for polishing cylindrical internal surface of cylindrical work pieces. So, this kind of cylindrical work pieces we have used. So, after MRF we have checked the surface roughness at different places and after R MRF we have checked the surface roughness at different places. We have seen that almost uniform polishing we achieve by using this rotational MRF process. So, here also we have checked effect of rotational speed of the magnet on percentage change in R A. Also, we have considered del R uh, outer roughness. So, outer roughness because our workpiece is cylindrical workpiece. As we have considered cylindrical workpiece, so in naked eye you will not see any undulations, but in outer roughness measuring machine, if you see. So, this kind of two circles are there. Uh, so, the, sorry, this this does uh, this kind of uh, uh, profiles we will get. So, here this is the circumscribed circle and this is the inscribed circle. Okay. So, this distance between the circumscribed circle and inscribed circle will give the out of roundness. So, this is the mean surface roughness profile here. So, this out of roundness is very much important when these two when some rotating parts are there, okay. it should be perfectly circular, its uh, cross section should be perfectly circular. So, we have seen that RMRF process is capable of improving the out of roughness of the cylindrical workpiece. So, this is the surface roughness profile, we see that at 150 rpm we got the very good surface roughness. And here also 150 rpm we got the very good out of roundness. Also we, we can see here metal level also improves with the increase in the rotational speed of the magnet. 
So at optimum shear rate, what happens? This surface peaks are easily removed, and when we are uh, shear rate or RPM with the increase in the RPM, shear rate of the fluid also increases. When your shear rate of the fluid is beyond the optimum shear rate at that time, because this fluid is actually this chain structure are uh, deformed. Okay, so this chain actually it has less force in between the CIP particles. So instead of cutting a certain height, it will rotate and adjust the height of the peak height or it will adjust this abrasive particles will adjust the depth of cut and it will reduce the small peaks from the workpiece surface. So with the increase in the rotation speed of the magnet, your surface roughness deteriorates op beyond the optimum surface, beyond the optimum RPM surface roughness deteriorates and also its outer roughness also deteriorates although its metal rim one increases. So with mesh size also we have seen, we have considered the silicon carbide abrasive particles. With the increase in the mesh size means we are reducing the size of the abrasive particles. So suppose from right hand side to left hand side if we consider, from smaller size abrasive particles we are considering to the bigger size abrasive particles here. With the bigger size abrasive particles, it will remove the surface undulations with the bigger cut, with the bigger cut. Okay, so surface roughness improvement reaches to an optimum value. And beyond that, actually, what happens? This abrasive part, this CIP particles, because this abrasive particle size is too high, then the smaller size abrasive particles, uh, CIP particles is not able to hold the give the bonding strain to the bigger size abrasive particles. The normal trend is that uh, trend is that you have to use similar size of abrasive particles and so you have to use similar size of abrasive and similar size of CIP particles. Also, with the bigger size abrasive particles, this kind of scratch marks are also generated. So, because of these scratch marks on on the already polished surface, we got a lesser improvement in surface finish beyond this optimum value optimum size of the abrasive particles. So <clears throat> with finishing cycle we can see surface finish improves here at 1600 finishing cycle very good surface finish is observed but beyond this 2400 finishing cycle we can see this kind of hedgy surface is obtained because at that time this abrasive particles actually uh, give scratch marks on the already polished surface. Here you can see this without finished surface is achieved. Here because these abrasive particles are actually uh, cutting the uh, giving the scratch marks putting the scratch marks on the already polished surface. So beyond this optimum finishing cycle, okay, so your surface finish deteriorates. So this kind of scratch marks are generated. So surface uh, means outer roughness also improves with the finishing cycle. So we can see here from 7.072 we got this 4.81 finish uh, means outer roughness. So again we have done the experiments region of experiments using hydraulic extrusion pressure of 32.5 to 42.5 bar, finishing cycle of 600 to 1400, rotational speed of the magnet from 50 to 250 and mesh size of the abrasive is 90 to 210. So here we can see that rotational speed of the magnet has given, we got the highest contribution, then finishing cycle, then finishing pressure. Then the again A square also square of this finishing cycle uh, rotational speed of the magnet also gives higher contribution. So it is also a very uh, significant parameter. For out of roughness also we got this 
Finishing cycle is the important parameter, single weekend parameter, most significant, and then this is the pressure. And also some cross parameters are there, n into m and a squared also there. So, so this is the optimum process parameter, 40 bar pressure, finishing cycle 1200, magnet RPM 149, silicon carbide mesh size on 153, we got 94.14 percent improvement in surface finish. So, this is the regression equation for this percentage change in RA and for change in out of darkness, this is the regression equation. So, after that we have done the parametric study with the extrusion pressure you can see percent change in RA increases after that it stalls. Change in out of roundness also with the RPM it increases because of higher centrifugal force, higher tangential cutting force. After that due to the shear thinning nature of this fluid it stalls. So, this shear thinning nature it is shown here. Rotational speed, we affected rotational speed on percent change in RA again. You can see when you are increasing the rotational speed of the magnet, after some time it will happen that helical path of the abrasives and genetics marks, ok, so whatever this work pieces actually it is made by boring operation, ok. The stainless steel work pieces are made by boring operation into the uh, boring operation. When we are using this, uh, uh, when you are increasing this RPM of this magnet, after some time you will see this, whatever genetics marks are there and this uh, helical path of this surface particle they takes on the similar path. So, instead of cutting it is following the same groups, so that is why it is not, it is not cutting. But with the increase in the rotational speed of the magnet you can see here, your arc length actually increases. So, it is taking more path considering it is uh, covering more path on the work surface that is why your surface firm roughness improves initially, but after that because of this it is taking the same path. So, that is why surface roughness deteriorates. With the mesh size also you can see with the already we have discussed with the increase in the mesh size your smaller size abrasive particles are there. So, more abrasive particles are taking part into the polishing. So, that is how surface roughness improves. After that, if we increase the mesh size of the abrasive particles, more abrasive particles will be there. Okay. So, there will be less CIP particles to give the bonding strength to the fluid. So, with the increase in the finishing cycle also, you can see percent change in RA increases. Initially, there will be a high rate of change in RA, but later it stalls. Initially, this loosely held material actually it is removed. After that, proper peaks and valleys are actually available. So, this average particle stakes actually is initially these peaks are actually very high. So, it is very easy to cut, but after that this width of this peak actually increases. So, that is why after some time it is becoming difficult by the abrasive particles to cut the surface peaks. So, this is the initial workpiece surface, this is the final workpiece surface, you can see after polishing this kind of mirror, <coughs> mirror finish surface we, 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 op, uh, we achieved. So, this is the initial workpiece surface, this kind of surface undulations are there, so these are the genetics marks are there. Now, after policy you can see this kind of process patterns are actually generated. So, this kind of process patterns are required for actually for uh, this process patterns are required for uh, in uh, poly, uh, in uh, cylinder cylinder boarding operation for in piston cylinder that inside cylinder it is actually honed it is honed surface are there. So, this kind of process patterns are generated it helps in oil retention. So, initially this kind of undulations are there because it is boring operation. So, that is why this kind of genetics are formed. After that you can see this kind of flat surface, flat
flat surface is generated, almost flat surface we achieve very high surface finish as 16 nanometer. So this is the SCM image, initial workpiece surface, RMF with 150 and rotational MRF process at 250 RPM. With optimum RPM, we can see very good surface finish is achieved. But at high RPM, these average particles, because of this, they are random marks, the surface finish actually deteriorates. So initial surface, uh, means outer roundness we achieved, we got, after boring operation, it is 5.17 micron. And after polishing, we got 3.39 micron final surface finish. <laughs>